Have you ever looked up at the sky on a beautiful afternoon and wondered to yourself, why is the sky blue? Let's find out on today's episode of Colossal Question. If you've ever seen a rainbow in the sky or played with a triangular prism, you probably know that light is actually made up of different colors. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And that's just the light we can actually see. Most light is actually invisible to us, like ultraviolet light, microwaves, or radio waves, all of which are forms of invisible light that our eyes can't see. Why all the talk of waves? Because light moves as waves that are different lengths. Shorter waves make bluer light, and longer waves make light that's more red. The air that makes up our atmosphere may seem colorless, but it's actually full of countless microscopic nanoparticles, like molecules of nitrogen, which makes up over 70% of the air we breathe. When sunlight passes through those particles floating around in the air, the shorter light waves get scattered, while the longer waves pass right through. Since blue light has shorter waves, the scattered light appears blue. That scattered blue light bounces all around in the air around us and enters our eyes, making the sky look blue. This effect is called Rayleigh scattering, and it's the reason why we see a blue sky even though air doesn't actually have a color. Okay, so that's why the sky's blue, but what about other colors? Why does the sky get pink or red as the sun is rising or setting? When the sun is rising or setting, it sits very low in the sky, which means the sunlight needs to travel through way more atmosphere before it reaches our eyes. When light is traveling through such a thick layer of atmosphere, the blue light tends to be scattered and deflected away in other directions, leaving more red, pink, orange, and yellow light for us to see. But when the sun is directly above Earth, the light doesn't need to travel through nearly as much atmosphere and scatters in all directions, which makes the whole sky appear blue. If we didn't have our atmosphere, not only would it be kinda hard to breathe, but the sun would shine directly down on us completely unblocked. So if you think it hurts to get a burn on a sunny day at the beach, it actually could be a lot worse. If you've ever seen the sun shining through a rainstorm, you probably know that's the time to start searching the sky for a rainbow. But why? Where do rainbows really come from? Let's find out on today's episode of Colossal Question. In order to understand rainbows, we need to go back to the year 1666, when a scientist named Isaac Newton made an important discovery about light. He realized that the white light we call sunshine is actually made of all different colors put together. He proved it by using a triangular piece of glass called a prism. If you shine white light through a prism, it splits into seven separate bands of color, and you might be able to guess them. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Rainbows naturally form in pretty much the same way. Whenever it rains, the air is full of moisture and raindrops. If there happens to be some sunshine while the air is still wet, each of those raindrops acts like its own mini prism. When sunlight hits the raindrops in exactly the right spot, the light is split into a band of colors that arcs through the sky with the same seven colors. You can see a rainbow anytime there's water droplets in the air and the sun is shining behind you at a nice low angle. The most vivid and visible rainbows occur while the sky is still dark and stormy. The sun shining on a dark background makes for an extra bright and colorful sight. Okay, so that's how rainbows are formed, but how do you find that pot of gold at the end? Well, unfortunately, that's not something you'll ever be able to do. You see, Rainbows don't have any real beginning or end. In fact, they don't really exist in any actual location in the sky. Seeing a rainbow is all about reflecting light at just the right angle, so its location looks different depending on where you're standing. So next time you happen to catch a glimpse of rainbow, just enjoy it and leave the gold for the leprechauns. 
Ah, winter fun. Sledding, snow forts, snowball fights, snow angels, and most important of all, big fluffy snowflakes. You've probably heard that every single snowflake is unique, but could that actually be true? Is every snowflake really unique? Let's find out on today's episode of Colossal Question. Lots of people say that every single snowflake has its own unique pattern, but that's not actually exactly true. It's just that the chances of finding two identical twin snowflakes is very, very, very rare. Your chances are about one in one million trillion. That's a one followed by 18 zeros. Just how probable is that? Well, you have a better chance of winning the lottery twice or getting struck by lightning three times than you do of finding two identical snowflakes. Okay, so now we know that two snowflakes can be the same, it's just really unlikely, but why do snowflakes take on so many unique patterns in the first place? Well, a single snowflake is made up of three basic things. Ice crystals, water, and dust floating around in the air. Snowflakes form inside very cold clouds when water vapor freezes onto dust particles, creating ice crystals. More drops of water freeze onto dust particles, making an even bigger collection of ice crystals that all clump together, creating a snowflake. As the water in a snowflake freezes, the molecules line up into a hexagon, which is why all snowflakes have six sides. The temperature of the clouds will affect the shape of the snowflake, and the amount of moisture in them will affect the size. The more moisture, the bigger the snowflakes. Once snowflakes start falling, they don't just take a straight path to the ground, they swish, swirl, and corkscrew through the air, swept all around by the wind and elements, which continues to shape a snowflake's pattern. That means that two snowflakes that were formed in the exact same cloud will take two different paths to the ground, which affects their shape, size, and gives each of them a unique pattern. So is every snowflake unique? No. But you're also never likely to find two snowflakes that look alike, so maybe wait for spring and stick to four-leaf clovers. Have you ever stopped and wondered why some leaves change color and fall off the tree every year? Let's find out on today's episode of Colossal Question. You probably know that not every tree drops its leaves each year. Evergreen trees, like pine trees, see their needles all year long. The kind of tree that loses their leaves are called deciduous trees. Believe it or not, trees actually use their leaves to help them eat. You see, leaves take in light from the sun and transform all the energy from the sunlight into food for the tree. Trees and other plants eat using a special process called photosynthesis. The leaves sit in the sun all day long, turning all that sunlight into energy. All that sun soaking is actually hard work for them, so it takes plenty of water to keep them healthy and functioning. So when the weather starts to get cold in the fall months as winter approaches, the air gets drier and drier as it gets colder, which leaves less water for the trees to suck up. With less water available, the leaves will begin to get dry, damaged, and will eventually die. So, trees spring into action before that happens and start getting prepared early once the air first starts to cool down. They take all of the nutrients that are left in their leaves and start to recycle it back into the branches, trunk, and roots to help the tree survive during the colder months when it can't eat anymore. All those good nutrients being leached out of the leaves causes them to dry out and change color. Now that there's nothing left for the dry, damaged leaf to do, the tree cuts it off and waits for them to fall off on their own. Now that the tree is leafless and can't eat during the coldest months, it basically goes into hibernation. That means, just like a bear, trees go dormant to preserve their limited stores of food. And as the air starts to warm up in the spring, the trees wake back up from their hibernation and get to work growing brand new leaves. So why do leaves change to those beautiful colors? Because they've been drained of their life force. Morbid? Maybe, but no less interesting. Every fall and winter, most trees slowly but surely lose their leaves. But not all trees. Some always stay green and never drop their leaves. But why? 
what causes some trees to stay green all year round? Let's find out on today's episode of Colossal Question. There are two basic types of trees. The first are called deciduous trees, which are any tree that seasonally shed all their leaves, usually in the fall as the weather starts to get colder. These trees have big, wide leaves that change colors before they drop. The other basic type of tree is called an evergreen, which are any trees you see that keep their leaves or needles year round. But that doesn't mean they never drop their leaves. Instead of shedding as it gets cold out, evergreens just drop a few leaves here or there all year while new ones grow in. Kind of like how our hair grows on our heads. Okay, so now we know what kind of tree stays green all the time, but why? Why do some trees lose their leaves while others keep them? Well, that has to do with how different trees keep their energy in the harsh winter months. You see, trees eat and get their energy from the same two places most plants do, water and the sun. They take in sunlight from the sun and water from the ground and convert it into energy. You might have heard of this process before. It's called photosynthesis. So trees need plenty of light to stay fed. But as the colder months approach, the days shorten, meaning less sunlight. Less sunlight means less energy for trees. Deciduous and evergreen trees handle this problem in different ways. Since deciduous trees have big leaves that take lots of energy to maintain, they simply close up the holes where the leaves attach to the tree to conserve moisture. By the time the coldest months of winter hit, deciduous trees have completely closed up shop to stash away as much energy as they can until the weather warms, the rain starts to fall, and the sun starts to shine. Evergreen trees, on the other hand, don't need to drop their leaves as it gets colder, drier, and darker. That's because evergreens are much better designed to handle the winter. They have very strong, sturdy, waxy leaves that are rolled up so tight they look like needles more than leaves. Those little needles need way less water than a big, fat leaf so the tree doesn't need to drop them all. So next time you're decorating a Christmas tree and one of those pine needles pricks you as you hang an ornament, well, at least you'll know why pine trees have those pesky pokers. <laughs>